What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to fix a common issue that you could be experiencing in Call of Duty Warzone or Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Basically, whenever you move your mouse, you may notice a really big delay between you actually moving it physically in person and your in-game character looking around. This is simply called input latency or mouse latency, mouse lag, etc, etc. I'll be showing you some really common fixes that will probably end up fixing your issue, but of course yours may be caused by other programs and things running on your computer specific to you. The first thing that you should really try before doing anything is doing a full restart of your computer and then opening nothing but the Blizzard launcher and of course Call of Duty Warzone. Of course, if you notice that your mouse latency is suddenly gone, then it was likely a program that was left open on your computer. Simply reopen things that you had open one by one until you eventually come back into your problem. If you experience it again, keep closing programs one by one until you find the one that causes issues for you. But let's assume that it's not another program running on your computer causing the issue. What else could it be? Well, of course, I'm firing up the game now so that we can get into the in-game settings. And there we go, now that I'm on the main menu, I'll simply wait for shaders to finish installing, and then I'll simply open up the Warzone section of this. In the bottom left, head across to the Options menu, and then to the Keyboard and Mouse section if you're not already here. On this first tab, you'll see Mouse Sensitivity at the very top, as well as clicking Advanced, you'll get different sensitivities for different modes of gameplay. However, at the very bottom, you'll notice Mouse Acceleration, Mouse Filtering, and Mouse Smoothing. If these are already set to 00 and disabled, it may be worth turning them on and then back off, i.e. dragging the slider up and setting it down to 0 by clicking here and typing 0, then hitting enter. As such, just to make sure that things are properly set. Upon hitting back, they should be properly saved. Now simply hop into a game and see if your input latency issue has been solved. If it's not solved and it's only an input latency issue with your mouse rather than both your keyboard and your mouse, you can simply hit start on your Windows computer and then type in mouse to open up mouse settings. In the screen over here, head across to the additional mouse options in the top right and another window will open. In here, head across to the pointer options section and make sure that enhance pointer precision is turned off. This is mouse acceleration built into Windows. And of course, you can set your sensitivity here once again. Once you've made sure it's turned off, hit OK, and hopefully your input latency issue has been solved. That's really all that you can do besides messing around with your DPI if your mouse supports that, which you can either do through the use of physical buttons or the use of mouse software. Sometimes incredibly high polling rates, which is also something you can customize how often the mouse reports its position, and the DPI can both cause input latency in some games if it's just for mouse only. However, if you're having an issue for both your mouse and your keyboard, then more than likely your system is overstrained while you're playing the game, causing input latency simply because of the FPS that you're getting compared to the amount of time it's processing to get those FPS. It's spending all the resources that it can to try and raise the FPS, however, it's just not doing good enough, meaning that you're getting some input latency. Something that could also be causing it is simply VSync. So once again, to fix all of these issues, head back into the in-games options section, and this time head across to the graphics section at the very top. Running the game in full screen mode instead of windowed, borderless, or extended window will usually result in less input latency for both your mouse and your keyboard. Down here, we have render resolution. You can raise and lower this as you see fit. However, if you're playing in full screen mode, make sure to click advanced over here and check to see if the screen resolution is set to the same resolution as your physical display itself. Either it'll have a lock next to it, meaning it's locked to your full screen resolution, or if this is unlocked, make sure it matches your physical display. The lower you drop your render resolution while keeping your display resolution over here set to the proper resolution, the more FPS you should be getting, but the reason we want to keep it locked to the same as our screen resolution is that it'll look less blurry that way. Scrolling down, you'll also see Sync Every Frame, VSync. This is something that should be disabled unless you're explicitly getting screen tearing. This will cause input latency, and it's something that's pretty commonly known, as you can even see down here. Now, right below it, we have custom frame rate limit. Now, usually you wouldn't want to change anything here unless you're recording and the game's eating all of your system resources, leaving nothing for OBS and programs like that, meaning your streams or recordings are incredibly stuttery and unwatchable. These are used to limit the amount of GPU that your game can actually use, and of course CPU to some extent, and they're usually used only really for streamers who need to keep some system resources for other programs on their computer. 
You, however, can try to raise or lower these and see if they affect your FPS positively or negatively. Of course, the only one that would affect you is the gameplay custom frame rate limit up here. On top of this, things like Nvidia Reflex, low latency, can be turned on or turned on to enabled and boost should give you less latency between your mouse, keyboard, the game, and your monitor, meaning that it's a smoother experience for you. Though, of course, it's limited to Nvidia graphics cards and won't really do as much as, say, turning off VSync. On top of this, if you're really struggling for system resources, things like NVIDIA highlights recording your game can of course put extra strain on your computer. And that's where the final tip of this video comes in. The game shouldn't be using 100% of your system resources, both CPU and GPU wise. If it does, it'll end up doing nothing but slowing down your computer, meaning that the experience won't be as good, especially when it comes to input latency. So make sure the game isn't eating all of your graphics card and all of your CPU, or at least it's not trying to use more than that. Play around with your settings to try and get the best FPS you can and see if that improves your input latency at all. On top of that, if you haven't ready, try closing all of the programs on your computer that aren't specifically necessary for you to play this game. As more programs draw from the system, there'll be less left over for the game, meaning you get a more laggy experience. But besides that, that basically wraps up this video here. These are the most common solutions and most definitely you solved your issue by now. Though of course, if you haven't, see if you're getting the same input latency in other games as that may help narrow down your troubleshooting. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.